Hey everybody, my name is Dong. I'm an animator based in Japan. And one thing I really like about Japanese animation is that they have a particular way that they deal with shadows to make a drawing really stand out. Figuring out lighting and how to draw shadows is an important part of your drawing, so today let's take a look at the art of drawing shadows. So why do we even draw shadows? Well, they serve a multitude of purposes. For one, they can help the drawing show form. They make your drawings look 3D and gives it structure. You can apply shadows to give the drawing a certain emotional impact, and you can use it to emphasize a certain part of drawing and use it to lead the audience's eye. There is an almost infinite way to light a character, but I'll go through several main types of lighting techniques you often see. On average, 80 to 90% of scenes are lit with a soft overhead light regardless of time or location. This is generally referred to in the industry as junko or normal lighting. This is a quick, simple, neutral way to apply your shadows to give your characters a sense of 3D structure and form. Often, in anime, you are often expected to light your scene this way unless otherwise specified. This is also a very emotionally neutral way of lighting a scene. Varying it up a bit, another common way to light a character is from the side. This is used when the light source is at an angle, like during dusk or dawn. Use this to give the drawing a stronger emotional feeling than the normal overhead lighting. Notice that much more of the drawing is in shadow here, almost 40% or so. A less common way to light a scene is with a strong light source from the back such as with a spotlight. The front of the character is almost all in shadow except the edges. You often see this in scenes depicting intense unease and fear as this gives the scene a really unnerving or melancholic feel. A variation on the backlighting is the half backlighting. The light source is coming from only one side in this case. By keeping most of the character hidden, we create a more mysterious feeling instead of unease like with the previous type of lighting. If you look at Conan the Detective, they make use of this lighting very often. So you see this sometimes, the top light. Unlike the overhead light, this one has the light source really close to the character and really intense. The top of the forehead are lit, while most of the face under the ridge of the brow is in shadow. The contrast between the lit areas and the shadow areas are pretty intense. This gives the character a sense of immense power and with a large amount of the character hidden in shadow, a kind of mysterious feeling as well. This kind of lighting makes me think of Gendo from EVA. So this is also a cool way to light up your character, lighting it from the bottom. The bottom of the chin, nose, and the top orbit of the eye are the brightest, with the top of the head in shadow. This gives the same impression lighting the character from the back, making the character have a sense of dread and unease. And you often see this in a lot of horror and mystery shows. So another way to use shadows is to show the form and structure of your characters and their clothing. An example would be to show how form-fitting a character's skirt is, Pencil skirts are tied around the outer thighs and would cast no shadow there, while the part where the legs are away from the skirt would cast shadow. A looser dress will cast a much more uniform shadow on the thighs. The wider the dress, the more distance between the hem of the dress and the legs and therefore longer the shadow. The same principle applies for the sleeves of shirts, for example. When drawing your scene, you also have to be cognizant of where the direction of the light is coming from. Making a little symbol noting the direction of the light where it's coming from is a good idea to help you plan your drawing. You should be aware of situations when parts of the body cast a shadow upon itself. By making sure the shadows look right, this will help make your drawing feel more realistic and grounded. We can push this further using our shadow to help define the texture and form of the character, such as in the folds of the clothing here to make it look like it's being stretched out, or under the breasts to give it shape and volume. A drop shadow is the easiest way to set your characters on the ground to make it look like they are actually contacting the ground. The opposite also works. By increasing the distance between the drop shadow and the character, you can make it look like they are floating or jumping. Also, be on the lookout for ways to create interesting shadows in your scenes. Having a certain part of the body be in or out of shadow allows you to make areas focal points, guiding the viewer's eyes as they scan the drawing and can really assist the audience in the reading of your drawing. 
remember that the shadows doesn't always need to make sense. It's fine to cheat sometimes in order to make a better drawing. The play of light and shadow can really contribute to the expression of the character and the mood of the scene. Match the type of lighting to the emotion you want to convey in your drawing. In this case, backlighting this drawing really brings out a subdued and mysterious feel. Refer to the earlier section of the video for this. And here's a quick tip if you're having trouble figuring out where the shadow should go. Think of the underlying form of the character in terms of a simplified 3D shape and use that as a guide to drawing your shadows. You should generally always be cognizant of the underlying structure of your character so you can emphasize them when drawing your shadows. And that's about it for me. I hope you guys learned something. For additional reading, check out animator Toshi's book. He talks about the subject extensively. And I want to give a big thanks to the Patreon supporters. Thanks to you, this channel can keep running. And links are down below if you would like to help me out. Check out my social media where I've been trying to post more sketches and illustrations. Alright, until next time.